There we are. All right. Good morning, everyone. It's Yvonne here from Mayish Wholesale Flores with another Mornings with Mayish. Uh, I have a very special guest today, Sarah Campbell from Intrigue Teaches. She is a speaker, designer, and educator specializing in luxury events. She has been on here two more times, and I'm very excited to welcome her back and hear all about the exciting things that she has going on right now. Uh, before we get started, and you know what, I'm going to actually share some of our, our the past two times that she's been on, um, so you guys can check that out. Um, and while we are getting started, just come on in, say hello. I know an email just went out, so I'm hoping to see more people. And I see Instagram Live is going. Good morning, everyone. Um, also, just a reminder, I know every time I've been live for like the last month or so, um, I've told you about this, but we are looking for our 2023 Mayish Design Star lineup. Um, we are selecting four designers to create three videos each. We are focusing on sustainability. Super excited about that. Um, and so if this interests you or someone else that you know who is a designer, make sure you help us spread the word. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, and I believe we're closing it off in a week or so, um, our application. So get it on in. Um, and we're really excited to review everything. We've, we've got some really great people in there and, you know, just want to make sure that we get everyone in there that is interested in joining us for next year. All right, guys. Uh, good morning, Rebecca, Nancy, Hi, Drew, True Love Designs. It's nice to see you all here. Um, and also a friendly reminder for those of you who may be new, uh, we post the replay, um, the show notes, and a podcast version of this live on the blog in a day or two. I am going to NYC tomorrow, so I'm going to try and get it done today. Um, and then also, if you want to watch the replay, uh, it will be available immediately on Facebook and YouTube. And then, you know, Instagram special, as you guys all know, my feelings towards Instagram. So I will post that again, hopefully today or like first thing in the morning before I leave. Sound good? All right. And if you have any questions, be sure you post them in the comments and we'll get to those. I'm going to bring on Sarah and we're going to get started. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for coming on. It's It's been a couple of years. And we were just saying before we went live, I was like, I didn't realize it's been 2020 since the last you've been here. So I'm really Don't excited to have you back. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> I know 2020 and we talked about, you know, the big flower fight. So right. Oh, that yeah. was so much fun. You know, yeah. when you were opening, I was I was eavesdropping as you were doing your opening. And you were talking about the uh, Mayesh Design Star. And I know I have told you this, but I want to tell everybody else that is what gave me my peak of interest in getting into video within within the the flower world was the first time I made my submission for the Mayesh Design Star. This was years ago, Yvonne. Like it had to be the second or third year you ever did it. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. We've, so thank you for that burst of inspiration. Yes, yes, yes. And and that also goes to show I we get we have so many people that have applied and it's and just because we don't select that person or you or whoever doesn't mean that you're not going to go on and do amazing things. You know, it's just, we have certain, we have certain people that we're looking for. We, we try to like, you know, get different people from different parts of the world and, well, and within the U S but you know, within our industry, that's what I mean. Um, so yeah, it doesn't, it just, you know, we, we love so many people, but we can only, we can only do so much in, in every given year. So I, I, I appreciate experience. you sharing that. I would love to see everyone apply because it just, <laughs> it gives you a different focus. And if you're really interested in that educational role and the floral role, like that is a great way to start to get those butterflies of being on camera out of the way, which they never really go away, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. I still get nervous. I still st stutter. Like I, yeah, I'm not a professional speaker by any stretch of imagination, but we, we don't need professional speakers. We just want someone that's passionate, um, just like you who like loves the industry, wants to share. Um, and I feel like when you, when you got, when you enter like back in the day, right? Like 10 years ago, when we first started this, we had one designer doing 12 videos, you know, eventually we had one designer do 12 videos and workshops and it was, it was a lot. 
Um, so, you know, it was a lot for one person. And so we decided to have multiple design stars in a year. And I feel like that kind of helps. So you still get like a really great taste of, you know, what it takes to kind of do these kinds of things um, and um, still get that experience, though, without having like the giant workload because it, it, it was a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for doing this for the industry because it really is a big support. And I know I'm not the only one who feels that way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for your support. Um, so Sarah, I know so many people know who you are, you know, you're just a little bit famous. I feel like even my girls are like, is she the one from that show? And I was like, yeah, she's, <laughs> she's the one from that show. Cause they, they love, they loved you on there. Um, but for those of you, uh, for those uh, of that are watching that don't know who you are, can you introduce yourself and share a little bit about your flower story? Sure. My name is Sarah Campbell. I started as a wedding planner, actually, and morphed my business into wedding floristry. I was not in the luxury lane of flowers when I first started. That's a whole long story that could probably take up a whole podcast of itself. Uh, once I was able to get my business into that luxury lane, I really started to thrive. Flowers is where my heart is. Flowers is what helped me propel my business because I love every part of it. I love the growing. I love the designing. And then as I started to do video, of course, after that initial uh, Mayesh Design Star application, and I discovered video with the help of team members that were working with me, of course, I, I then started to create this community that I didn't even know I needed or wanted until it was there. And now I don't know what I would do without the Intrigue community. This community spans all over the globe. We are 10,000 members strong and growing, and it is just this community of florists that we come together, we uplift, we encourage. It is such a positive flower environment. Uh, and then that, that building of that community is what led to teaching workshops, touring. I know we talked in 2018 when I was touring the country, teaching. And then, uh, and then of course, Intrigued Experience, which is a conference we host annually, which hasn't happened since 2019 because, well, we all know what happened in right. 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and then uh, what else can I say about me? Uh, of course, there was Netflix is the big flower fight. And Jordan, I see Jordan in the comments. Jordan saying hello. Jordan and I were together on the big flower fight. And I just have to say, if anyone is planning on joining a flower-focused competition show, maybe bring a florist with you or your favorite right-hand girl who was a lot of fun, but uh, my dear, she can't do flowers to save her life. It's okay. She's really great at emails and keeping the business running. Uh, but every day of the big flower fight, she's like, oh my gosh, we have to do flowers again. And every day I was, oh, look at all the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Shout out to Jordan because it had to be intimidating, right? Especially for, for both of you guys just to being on a show and then with Jordan, you know, not really dealing with flowers that that's that's a brave thing to do you know i think she i think she held herself well though i i definitely think she did a lot better than she gives herself credit for <laughs> she she could be a designer if she wanted to absolutely absolutely so the let's talk about design so the floral industry seems to be buzzing about your conference intrigue experience conference that you're hosting next week can you tell me about this event and and every all the fun design stuff that you guys are doing Sure. So this conference started because I had been attending floral events and I wanted something that was immersive and luxurious and beautiful as well as educational. So I want to learn the techniques and the mechanics. And I want to learn from these, these designers who have done incredible things, but I want to do an environment that speaks to my soul. And I love posh. I love Lux. And those are the clients I like, I like to sell to. So I thought, you know, if I couldn't find a conference or a gathering of florists that met those needs, maybe I could just host one. Uh, and I kind of, I tend to do things just on a whim and I hosted this conference on a whim. I was completely shocked when it sold out. So we had, and in fact, my first few designers that I called to be part of the very first intrigued experience were the Mayesh design stars. <laughs> it was Mandy Madrick was my first call because she was my ultimate floral celebrity. Um, she was my very first call. I remember being terrified that she was gonna tell me no. Um, she did not tell me no. And she joined us. In fact, she's been with us every year except for this year, which 
I'll have to call her and figure that out. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, so yeah, so with this conference, we bring in some of the best floral designers around the country. And in fact, this year we started bringing international because we have uh, guest designers that are going to be teaching that were on the big flower fight with me. We have um, Hank and Yan, who were the wild and crazy and just wonderful energy designers um, that they made it all the way to the final. If you guys haven't watched, sorry, I may have just spoiled that. Uh, but they're, they're like my guys. favorites. Like I saw that and I was like, oh my God, I would love to meet them. <laughs> yes, they are. I love them. Uh, I, I love them just to my core. So they are actually splitting and they are teaching two separate workshops. You'll get to learn from both of them hands on. Uh, Hank is going to do, oh gosh, not everyone knows this yet, but we have had a local, the local welders have built these eight foot lion structures and oh, wow. the attendees are going to be able to design with Hank these eight foot lions of flowers. And, uh, and then Yan is doing a, a separate workshop and he is doing this ground to table installation with these pockets of blooms that are just bursting. Uh, we have, we also have Ace who was on HBO's full bloom. Ace is an incredible designer. Uh, and Ace is teaching these large scale headdresses. Uh, we for love these workshops. Who else yeah. do we have? Oh, we have such a great lineup. Oh, we have Jenny T, who is the master of of floral mechanics. She's also the author of Perishable Poetics, I believe, is her book. Uh, she's going to be with us, and she's doing a demonstration on these really detailed, refined mechanics. And uh, yeah, so there is a number of workshops. So you get to not only do the hands-on workshops with every designer you get to experience, you're also going to have time in the sessions where you're going to have business sessions taught by some incredible people. We have uh, Harmon Stephanie from Harmony Harvest, who runs their social media, is talking to us about social media because that is what she has mastered. And uh, if you don't follow, that's another great account to follow. Uh, and then in between these educational sessions, we have the most beautifully styled and curated lunches and dinners. In fact, our, our formal dinner for this conference is labeled Met Gala Meets Garden Party. And we are really having some fun with it. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Amazing. And this year, how fast did it sell out in? Like, it was like minutes. All right. So we amazingly this conference has sold out every year we've hosted it which i still feel like so i don't appreciative that that happens this year we sold out in 34 minutes that's that's crazy and then i think that really speaks to like how you really have carved out a niche in the education sector of our industry and so like what do you think makes intrigue experience different from other workshops or conferences that makes people look like it's hard selling workshops, especially, you know, cause they aren't, they aren't cheap to do They, you know, it's expensive to put them on for you, for someone to go. And, you know, it's a commitment. You've got to take the time and you have resources that's involved. So, you know, what, how do you, how do you do that? And what makes this so special? Well, I think the word you said that was so powerful is commitment. I have such a commitment when I host anything, whether it be this conference or it be these smaller workshops we do, I have a commitment to create an incredible experience for the attendees because I know what I feel like when I've gone to an event and it isn't an incredible experience. I look for experiences. I pay for experiences. I want that. So I have this firm commitment that not only will I create an environment that I would thrive in and I'm hoping that I am bringing in people that will thrive in that same environment. Um, if you don't like to be pampered while you're learning, if you don't like to be in this beautiful, immersive experience, if you don't like fine linens and beautiful china and beautiful music, then maybe this isn't the event for you. But it is for a lot of individuals, and I'm so grateful that, that they find me. <laughs> uh, yes. But anyway, so it really is a commitment. I want to make sure that I am going to exceed expectations every single time. Uh, and this year I may have gone a little bit overboard with my exceeding of expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, Sarah. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, so you, I 
feel like you teach full time, right? And or do you still do designs for weddings and events? I still do designs for weddings and events. Um, that is definitely a quieter side of my business. I did take 2020 off because, well, 2020. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I intentionally took that time. In fact, I didn't go into 2020 in, intending to take the full year off. That wasn't my plan. But knowing that we had the show coming out, I decided to take some time off. And then after 2020 struck and all the COVID chaos, uh, I decided to spend my time working on our virtual courses, which is where we developed that Big Dreams Virtual Installation Masterclass, which has been by far the best course we've ever done. Uh, and it was because we had the time that we were able to focus on it. So then I took all of the end of 2020 and into 2021, only focused on building that out and making sure that was everything that the attendees, that the participants would were going to need to be able to do these large scale pieces. So, um, but I do still do weddings, have weddings. It is not necessarily what I'm selling right now. I'm focused on education, but I don't think I can ever let go of weddings. There's that feeling of fulfillment when you create a design and you walk in, you see the couple's face. Uh, so our next wedding is New Year's Eve, and it is spectacular. We have thousands upon thousands of stems of beautiful baby's breath coming in, and we are creating an environment for a cocktail reception. Uh, I don't know that I can spill all the details, but it's going to be beautiful. Beautiful lounge spaces, setting spaces. I, if, if I'm going to be doing a wedding. I want to make sure it's an immersive wedding. I want to make sure it's something that is true to the core of what I do. Amazing. I can't wait to see the pictures. <laughs> um, Jordan posted a question. Hey, Jordan, is there a difference between what and how you teach online versus virtual? That's a great prompt. Thank you, Jordan. Um, there is a difference. So when I teach in person, I generally have one day or two days with you. Uh, and I, if you've ever been to one of our workshops, I give as much as I can. I answer every single question. As long as I know the answer, I answer every question. Um, if I don't know the answer, don't worry. I will find someone who knows the answer and connect you. And, but I can only give so much in two days. With the online courses, I'm able to spend months thinking and organizing and getting all the information out. And then with our online courses, there's also follow-up so people can ask questions and get real-time responses. So my students can reach out to us. They can ask myself questions. They can ask my marketing team questions um, and then get actual answers because although a 10-week course can have a lot of information, it doesn't have everything you'd ever think of. And we're always building and adding on to it. So I think, honestly, you get more out of the virtual but the in-person is a lot of fun. <laughs> and the in-person is fun because you get to work with flowers and lots of flowers, especially because like you said, you love like kind of that immersive luxury kind of that's, that's your thing. So what kind of flowers are you bringing in for the conference this year? Oh, so first we have tons of beautiful garden roses coming from Alexander Farms. We have uh, Princess Ico, which is my personal favorite. We have, I believe it's Rosa Loves Me is another one. We've got piano roses coming in. I am a, I'm a rose girl. I, and I have a special place in my heart for garden roses. And then we have some beautiful painted greenery coming in as well. Uh, I love bright and colorful. So one of our designers we have, he's coming from New York, Josh with Birch Events. Uh, Josh is pairing with Sue Davis with Fresh Designs out of Philadelphia. And they are creating this kind of over the table tunnel, if you will, of these bright corals and peach tones, uh, Ming fern, these painted Ming ferns are going to create this big impact. And that's going to be incorporated into the gala dinner that everyone gets to experience. I think... Those are our highlight flowers. Of course, we have 
some astilbean, some callas, and there's some carnations for those beautiful fancies with the fluttery petals. Yes. Uh, some dahlias. Oh, I got a visitor right here. <laughs> my Remy came barging in my office. I was like texting my family because everyone's home because of Nicole, the storm that's near South Florida. Um, school got canceled today. So I have my two girls. My mom is in town. My husband's home. Like everyone's here. Party. Today. Why that? I should be over there. No, I don't want to get caught in the storm. <laughs> It shouldn't be bad though. Um, but yeah, he just, he comes and visits most of my shows. Anyhow, he barges through. I just need to teach him how to close the door when he leaves. He comes to <laughs> check on me and then he just leaves the door open. <laughs> well, my little friend here has decided the only place he wants to be is right where my mic microphone sits. So I'm now holding the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> things we do for animals. <laughs> of course, right? Right? The things we do oh. for sure. Um, okay, so... Tell me about the hands-on workshops during Intrigue Conference. Will, um, what will the designers be creating? Sure, the hands-on, let me see, I have to find a new place for this microphone now. <laughs> All good. The, the hands-on workshops are one of my favorite parts because of the way we break the groups up into smaller smaller groups and they get to have this immersive learning experience. So uh, we have Beth uh, O'Reilly, who's another one of my favorites and was a Mayesh design star. Yep. Shout out to Beth. And, yeah, Beth is going to be teaching the designers on how to incorporate produce and fruits and vegetables into your design for that really organic and natural look. And there's a lot of small little techniques used to get these pieces to stay just right. You know, it's not just plopping them in an arrangement and they stay. Um, so she's got a workshop there. We've got Atasha who is going to be teaching some lush and low pieces. So a lot of times when we think luxury, we think of big, tall arrangements, but we're now seeing that there is this big trend is movement going on to lower pieces that are just pouring with flowers. Um, so she's going to be teaching that hands-on workshop. What else? Jenny T is teaching all about the mechanics. So she's got her demonstration and is going to be giving the designers an opportunity to hands-on do some of the mechanics for her designs, which I think is going to be really, really neat. Uh, what else do we have? We have the lions, of course. We have the uh, the ground to table install, which is going to be really cool. There, there is definitely a lot going. Oh, you know, we're doing one more thing that not even the attendees know right now. So you know that question about what happens to flowers after an event. All right. That's an age old question. So there is a local charity here on Maryland's Eastern Shore because we are hosting this conference in my hometown, in my home city, which is really, really cool. And I, I don't know this would have happened if it wasn't for COVID. So I'm so grateful for that. Uh, sorry, I just said I was grateful for COVID. I'm going to take that back. Hey, there's silver linings <laughs> to everything. And yeah, yin and yin yin. Yep. Uh, so there's this local charity and I believe it's called Wyatt's Warriors. I have to double check the name. So we are doing a giving session towards the end of the conference where the flowers are gathered together and everyone is just going to come together as a community and design these bouquets however their heart feels. So this one is not a lesson. This is an experience in giving. And then these, these bouquets are then going to be sold to charity throughout the community to give back to, uh, to this local charity. And I'm, I'm really excited to be doing that because that is something that, I feel like is really important with these large scale events. So we find a way that we can give back. That's amazing. I love that. Um, Cause that is always a question when with our own workshops, we like have, you know, it was always kind of sad, like, okay, what do we do? And we would, we would try to do that too. Like find somewhere where people could like enjoy the flowers afterwards. Cause I will say it's not easy to, to repurpose and, and actually get the process of giving these flowers to charity or getting them sold to charity because a charity doesn't benefit if you just dump a bunch of flowers on them. Right. Uh, so it is a difficult process. Luckily we have uh, Amy with Monterey farms here in Maryland and she has been really our powerhouse in making this happen. I don't know that I could have done it without her. That's amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I just want to switch gears a little bit, right? We're talking, we were talking about design and things like that. You know, you've had your conferences and, you know, you're doing weddings and events. So I feel like you're really kind of in the mix of things and see flower trends coming and going. So do you have, what do you think is on the horizon in terms of design and flower trends in our industry? Oh. Well, to my delight, 
color continues to be the front runner. You know, we went through a, a long time with a lot of neutral and natural, and that's not going anywhere, but we're really seeing this influx of color continue and color pairings that we really hadn't seen before making a hit. Um, and like I said before, I'm seeing luxury go low, which is different because luxury has always been tall and big, but right. it definitely is taking a step down and not a step down in flower counts at all. In fact, somehow these low arrangements are taking more flower counts. Uh, but I'm definitely seeing that. And then, of course, the immersive wedding experiences where these clients, they want to take those images they're seeing in Pinterest on Instagram and they want to bring them to life, but they don't just want to do one. They want to have five or six immersive experiences for their guests. I think that is something really different that is just starting to bud. I, I'm seeing it step out where it used to be the clients just started to maybe want one place for photos. And right. it is really taking a lot more, a lot more energy and a lot more excitement. That that's amazing. Um, and re that's super exciting. I feel like I wonder if it has, you know, anything to do with, you know, kind of all these selfie places that like are popping up in all the cities and, and, you know, and people love that. And so, you know, and it makes a lot of memories. So, you know, when they're trying to plan their own wedding and event, they want, they want people to like have fun and not just be sitting at the table and just eating and just dancing, like making it a little bit different than what typical guests see. I think you're onto something. I hadn't thought about that, but that makes so much sense. You know, they want places for people to take pictures. They want places that people are just going to want to talk about, you know, in the way that video and social media works now, it is all about creating chatter and excitement and those things, they definitely create chatter. So I think you nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. We actually have like a, it's called, I think the flower world here um, near my house. And it's literally, it's all silk flowers, but it's literally just like 20 different vignettes of all flower stuff. And it, it's, you know, it's fun. And that like always that makes fun. me, makes my heart happy. Um, you mentioned that you saw like, you see like maybe some color combinations that you haven't really seen before. Can you, can you dive into that a little bit? Like what color combinations do you think? Sure, off the top of my head, um, yeah. one, that I, <laughs> one that I hadn't seen in a while was those bold teal colors. So I feel like teal had kind of taken a step back. Um, and I'm seeing teal paired with pretty much everything now. I'm seeing with fuchsias, with grays, um, with yellows. It is, it's definitely given that pop. I'm also seeing reds come out more than I'd seen before. And the red is being paired with uh, well, it's the reds, the burgundies, kind of like this color here that I'm seeing. And it's being paired with, again, you're seeing it with the yellows. You're seeing it with, with colors that are almost on the other side of the color wheel, the color spectrum. Beautiful. I love it. I'm wondering what the rest of you guys are seeing in terms of trends. I know you all are in the mix of it. Um, what do you think? Or like different flowers or what, what's going on? We want to know. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's about time that a new flower makes a, a pop. Like every few years we see a flower that just completely pops off. There was um, the quicksand rose that popped off and then we couldn't get it because everybody wanted it, um, yeah. which that might still be popping. <laughs> yes, it's still popping. It's like yeah, it's it's a forever popping. struggle. <laughs> Juliet, then there was the, the brown dyed, dyed flowers. Those popped off. Right. Uh, wonder what it's going to be this year. I don't know. I don't have I a prediction for this year. I know. I'm curious too. I want to, I want to know what everyone else thinks and what they're seeing and what their clients want. Cause that'll uh, help us. So I just you know? know shades of brown Felicia. Felicia, I think is going to be an intrigued experience with us. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, um, shades of brown. I've also seen a lot of the browns and I've seen browns paired with the bright colors, which is another one of those really interesting pairings. Yes, yes, it is. And speaking of kind of like those, you know, topies, browns, you know, we have that cafe latte rose and we're, and uh, Amy Belsters is helping us put together a bunch of different color palettes and, you know, kind of more traditional and different in, in bright colors. And, and so it should be, it should be fun and exciting. I can't wait to share that with you guys. And Felicia says, yes, yeah, she's going to be there. 
Oh, Felicia, uh, where you're in for a treat. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Shai wants to know when the next in-person training is and in what town she would love to attend. Sure. So we are actually going back out on tour. I don't know if, Yvonne, you might know this, but in 2023, we start our tour January. It's January, February, and March. We are touring coast to coast, seven cities back to back. Uh, we're hitting Los Angeles. Miami, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix, Richmond. I might have missed something. <laughs> uh, so uh, that tour, it doesn't even start. We don't even start sales on that until December the 6th. But that is going to be our next in-person. We've had so many requests for in-person training. And in fact, that tour started as just a social media marketing tour where we were just talking social media and business and we had so many requests to do a live in-person floral we contacted the venues added the day on so we have our social media masterclass on monday and then the hands-on floral class on on tuesdays very that sounds so cool and a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> It is a lot of work. It is a lot of yes. work. Yo, you've done these. You know how much work goes into these. Yes. It's like a full-time, full-time thing to plan these things. That is for sure. So many details <laughs> to make it special. You know, yeah, it's easy yeah. to like, hey, let's just throw some flowers and get some people there. But, you know, if you want to make it special, yeah, it's it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. I, so I definitely appreciate what, what you guys go through. I think what really helps us is we partner with Style Shoots Across America and their team comes in and they dress the space. So we're able to focus with the attendees and the hands-on designers on really fine tuning the floral education, the floral designs we're creating and making sure everyone has that great experience. And then those flowers get built into these beautiful over the top designs that are created by the Style Trees Across America team who brings in the fine linens and China and accents and props. And this pairing has been like a gift in my life because we just complement each other so well. And it, it helps both the photographers that are there and it helps the florists to have better, better content and a better experience. Very cool. So I was going to ask like, kind of how do you select your location? And, you know, again, from my, my experience planning workshops, like, it's honestly one of the, the hardest things to do is finding like the right place to host these things, to fit the people, to have the right lighting, you know, all of that. So do you have a process other than like working with uh, Styled Shoots Across America or is that like a collaboration? It is a collaboration. We actually go back and forth. We, we do sometimes have a difference of opinion on what we want for venue. Uh, so I like white natural settings i like natural light um, as as well as as they do but i really like a clean background because that makes the flowers pop they like a more a more romantic lots of architectural details so we come together and we look at the city we find venues we like and most importantly we're looking for venues that want us there because flowers they do make a mess uh right. and and flowers are a lot of work so if you don't want us there uh we're not going to have a good time so i prefer to go to venues that invite us and if a venue has invited us we will reach out to them and let them know we want to be there uh but this is such a production it needs to be a partnership so the venue has to be on our team it is difficult to find the right venues, which is sometimes is what slows us from going on these tours is because we have to find the right spaces. And I have hosted workshops that were not in the right spaces. So sorry to anyone who attended them. You may not even know how bad I thought the space was because hopefully I gave it my all and gave you a great experience, but there are definitely some spaces I would never go back to. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I feel that like to my core, like our very first workshop that we did um, with Christy, we we thought the space was going to be bigger than what it was. Like it was our first time, and I mean the lighting was great, but it was like it was a lot tinier than what we thought. Like square footage wise, we had it. Yeah, they give us the, the plans, and then we get there and we're like, "Ooh, that's this isn't right." <laughs> so we we you know. we have booked venues that we arrived and we, it was a beautiful space, beautiful gardens. And we assumed they had an indoor space. In the beginning, we didn't think to ask, do you have indoor space? Well, we were in Atlanta in, in late March, which should be relatively okay weather, but it was right. freezing and their indoor space could fit 15 people. Well, 
we had 15 attendees and hundreds of flowers. So we had to make it work. Um, and I got to say, it was one of the most fun times we had in the workshop, but tiny, tiny space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always crazy. Um, just wanted to circle back to the trends comment and, you know, chat about that. I had someone on Instagram, Eternal Bouquets by JM, say they're seeing lots of asymmetrical designs and arches, lots of terracotta weddings and floating installations. Oh, floating installations. I love floating flowers. I love, I forgot this was a trend. Thank you for reminding me. Floating installations, I feel like is really picking up. I didn't know this was going to be as popular until we posted one. And with that one we posted, I saw a just a surge of attention that came to this floating design. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. And, <laughs> and I felt like this is something we definitely have to share more. So we actually built a floating element, um, educational element into our virtual installation masterclass. So we put that into the virtual class so that people know how to do these things. Uh, but that's something, if people have a pool or they have fountains, you're going to see floating flowers. It's that conversation piece, right? That things that make people see flowers in a way that they wouldn't be expecting. Right. Did you, did you see our underwater shoot that we did? Um, no. When was <laughs> this and how did I miss this? <laughs> let me, hold on, let me pull it up. Hold on underwater i'm googling right now because that's easier for me right now Mayish. um yeah it was it was pretty amazing let me share the link with you guys behind the scenes this is behind the scenes here we go so it was with um ashley one of our design stars this year she's she's here in florida in upper florida i'm like south florida she's upper florida <laughs> um but yeah, she works with one of her photographer friends, Kimber, from Water Bear Photography. Um, and is anyone else just on the edge of their seat dying to see this? Because my it, heart is racing. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty amazing. Here, I can share my screen if you want to share it. See real quick. Hold on. Yes, we all want to see. Um, but it was honestly such an amazing thing. Um, <gasps> here's like one wow. shot this is the video obviously i'm not going to play that right now but here's some I'm slowly going to go through these My wow how so, did i miss this yeah it was it was pretty epic honestly we were like you know when she told us this concept we're like oh my god <laughs> and yes. it just it's yeah it All right, for everyone listening right now, I have a new goal in my life. Um, Ashley, Ashley was her name. I need yes. to be your best friend. And I actually want to come and design underwater with you. Like I will learn how to free dive and hold my breath, whatever I need to. I'll put a wetsuit on if I have to. I want to do this more than anything I've wanted to do in years. This is incredible. Isn't this incredible? Like this is, this is just like totally crazy over the top. So we were like, we were so happy. And it's Ashley Rodriguez of Garden and Grace Florals. And she she's amazing. We love her. That, that might be the coolest thing I have seen since, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so I'm putting the link there for you guys if you want to check that out, Sarah. If you want to check it out. Um, and yeah, she's, she's doing some really cool stuff. And I, I want to see that at an event. I want someone to go to some sort of aquarium that has a really cool space and like, <laughs> right? How do you do that? Oh, I want, Ashley, I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> yeah. I want to do this. All right, Intrigued Experience 2023. <laughs> we are looking for a venue right now. And I am so hoping we can find a venue that has a pool because I want to figure this out. So Ashley, please be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I will connect you guys after this show for sure. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So I did want to circle back to your conference. Um, and, and speaking of being immersed um, <laughs> in your advertising, you do talk about being an immersive event. You've said it here today live several times. So what does that really mean for your attendees? 
So an immersive event to me is an event you show up to and you're just kind of surrounded by an environment that allows you to shut out the outside world and just focus on where you are. So from the time the designers arrive, they're greeted at registration and we have gifts for them at registration. There's music. We move them into the location where there's going to be sessions and they're going to meet the educators and these floral celebrities and, and they're going to see the flowers. And from that time and that initial introduction all the way through our final dinner, everything is curated for them. So everything from the music to the flowers to the settings, they don't have to think about anything. Everyone is is on this community journey, if you will, for three days throughout Intrigued Experience. And they're surrounded by beauty and organization and design inspiration and education all the way through. So that's what an immersive experience is to me, just something that really allows you to step away from the outside world. And I think I partially created this because that's what I need. I, in order for me to really focus, I have this busy brain that does a lot and it thinks a lot. I need to be in immersive situations. Even when I go on family vacations, not every family vacation, but for the most part, we try to go places that we can be immersed in the environment, like floating down the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon. Your phone doesn't work. You're immersed in water and stone, and you're with these people that are on the same journey, the same experience. That allows my brain to focus on just the moment and just where I am. So I wanted an environment with intrigued experience where these designers could focus just on being inspired and learning so that they could propel their business as they leave and they go on throughout the year. And I got to say, there has been some major success that has come out of this conference. And um, I'm not going to name drop today, but I could name drop a very long list of some incredible success. And I think it really comes down to the fact that driven individuals, and this does not come down to me, but driven individuals that are really ready to take their floral business and build into that level, they are attracted to what we do. So they don't come to intrigue and I change them. I don't, I, I personally don't have the impact on them, but those individuals come together in this location, in this event, and they are then connected with each other and success builds success. So these designers are inspiring each other and they're building this community within the community uh, and that's really what the secret kind of sauce is to Intrigued Experience. I create the environment, but I'm not the one doing anything for these designers. I'm just setting an environment that they can help catapult their business. Amazing. I love it. Okay. So we talked earlier about how the conference sells out very fast in like minutes, you know, 35, 38 minutes. Um, how, so how do... <laughs> How do designers get tickets? Um, well, this yeah. <laughs> we're still trying to figure this out. <laughs> so we we want the designers that have been there, of course, have the first opportunity. That's the other reason it does sell out quickly. So if you have been to Intrigued Experience, not any of our workshops, but if you actually attended the conference, you get the first opportunity at that conference to purchase your seat for the following year. And the majority of people do return. So we now have five years of conferences where people have the opportunity to register before it's open to the public. Um, so when we go to ticket sales, even if we have 100 seats available, there may only be 40 that open to the public because the other 60 have been purchased. So if you want a seat for Intrigued Experience, first, you have to be on the pre-registration list. Um, that list is up now. I don't know if I sent it to you, but I'm, I, I can share it with you. Okay. Um, and Allison, if you're still here, maybe you can post that list for us. Um, so get on the pre-registration list because you'll get an email that will let you know when the ticket sales open. There will be a time and a date, and then you have to get your alarm set and make sure that if you want to see, you register at the time the tickets open. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever have a 34-minute sellout again, but I would say just to be on the safe side, maybe maybe have your place in line, get on that list, and 
and make sure that you are there when tickets actually open. Very good. So I know you mentioned that you have the tour coming up at the beginning of the year. Do you have your next conference already planned date time? We do. So location is still to be determined. We are, we have looked at a couple different locations. Uh, Logistically, I feel like I can do more, build more and support our community more if I keep it in Maryland. Uh, However, I am so drawn to bring this conference to a beach location that has palm trees and white sand and beautiful pools for underwater things. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So we do not have a destination for the conference, but the date is locked in Uh, for 2023. We are November 13th, 14th and 15th. It is the second week in November, uh, which seems to work pretty well for the floral industry as a whole. And it works really well for me, which is really the most important because if I couldn't get it done, then it wouldn't get done. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you got to be there. <laughs> yeah. Very exciting. So when, when, like, so people need to get on that list then pretty much. Yeah. The pre-registration is, a, is the best. So we probably won't open ticket sales until after the tour. It more than likely will open ticket sales in late March to early April for next year's intrigued experience. But getting on the list now will make sure that you don't have to be just hoping that it's open to the public. Okay, so that's something I didn't say. So when you get on the list, you actually will get access usually 24 hours before it opens to the public. So only the people on the list will have access the first day. And then when it opens to the public, then everyone, all the thousands upon thousands of of social media followers, everyone gets access to it. So getting on the pre-registration list is always the best. And then for anyone who's trying to get the best price on a workshop, because the the workshops, the conferences, the classes I host, they are not cheap because we aren't cheap. We do some big over-the-top things. Uh, In order to get the best and the lowest price, it is always, for any event we do, it's always on launch day. On launch day is the lowest price. It never goes lower than that. It only goes up from there. And sometimes on launch day, it can be as much as 500 to 1,000 off what the actual ticket price is. So that is always the best way to to get your seat for anything. Very good. Good advice. This was great, Sarah. Do you have any last words you want to share before we wrap up for the day? Uh, last words are, let's go back to what we started with the Mayash Design Star. I am looking at Mayash Design Stars, and I'm sure, Yvonne, you've seen, like, I've looked at Mayash Design Stars over the years, and we brought a number of them in. What I really like is you find those individuals that are comfortable sharing, those individuals that want to help build the community, and that's really important because within Intrigued Experience, when we bring educators in there, not only do I want designers that are good at what they do, but I also want hearts that want to share, encourage, uplift, and that aren't going to feel offended when someone takes the lesson they learned and reproduces it because that's what we're doing. That is the intent to teach and share and have other designers reproduce those those designs. So, So those of you that are interested, please please check out Mayash's Design Star because I'm watching. You're so sweet. Thank you. And I mean, that is true though. Like a lot of our design stars, like after after they are able to kind of take advantage of this platform. I mean, we we do work with people who already have their community and things like that too, but we, we don't shy away from someone who like, you know, may be newer to the space. Um, and when that happens, there's a lot of times where, you know, they get to work on different projects and people do reach out to them and, um, you know, I, I already know some things going on behind the scenes with a couple of our design stars, you know, and I can't share any of that stuff because nothing's final or and it's not really my thing to share. But, um, you know, it's exciting to kind of be a part of that. And, and we, we love that, too. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah. So sweet. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been wonderful. It is so natural and just fun to talk to you. I, I love this. <laughs> oh, thank you. That means so much to me. Um, and I love you. I love what you're doing. I can't wait to see what you guys do. I'm about this lion, for example. That sounds amazing. Can't wait to see the lion. <laughs> oh, it'll be all over Instagram, all over TikTok. Like 
uh, for the next, in fact, starting today, we have a meeting in about an hour. It's our, our final walkthrough. And starting today, we are going to be flooded with all things intrigued experience. Like, you are going to be sick of me in seven days. Actually, don't be sick of me. Just keep watching. Never, <laughs> never, never, guys. Right? So awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to see everything, Sarah. Stay in touch. Um, and guys, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for joining Sarah and I today, spending some time with us. And I just wanted to let you know that you need to mark your calendars for next week, Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. I have David Dawson. He's coming back on and he's going to be sharing some new flowers with you guys that he's really excited about. Um, I also wanted to let you know that, let's see, I have my calendar up. Um, on the 30th, I have Steve from Cal Flowers. He's going to be talking about that flower feeling, which is a flower campaign that we've been talking about um, for the last little bit. Super excited about that. And then our first ever Flower Jeopardy is scheduled for December 7th. So we have a lot of exciting things happening Super excited about Flower Jeopardy. We have some really great contestants. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. So I hope you guys mark those days down and join us. Um, and with that, I will see you all soon. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.